Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new coffee talk. This video was originally going to be two separate videos, but I decided to put them all together because they all kind of went together. So since there's going to be so much going on in this video, I'll leave timestamps down in the description and I'll also put it in like a comment so you can jump to specific topics if you would rather. I don't mind. But basically what I wanted to accomplish with this video was give you a post-grad life update, what's going on in my life. Two, I just had a discussion on my mind that I wanted to have with you guys about success and definitions of success and the different life paths that you can take and kind of how to cope with going with one that doesn't really align with society's definition of success. And then also sort of a story time of me in the emergency room the other day. So grab a coffee or a cup of tea if you'd like and let's just get straight into the video. So if you're new here, let me catch you up really quick so you know who I am and where I'm coming from. My name's Katie. Hi, welcome to my channel. I graduated college in May of this year, so May of 2019, and I got a bachelor's degree in creative writing with a minor in sociology. Immediately after graduating, I went straight into work literally the day after I graduated. I started my job and I was working as a copywriter in a software company downtown. It was a really, really nice first job. I guess because I'm not working there anymore, I can tell you where I was working. I know some of you figured it out because you looked me up on LinkedIn, but I was working for Quark Software and like I said, I was a copywriter for them. But yeah, I think I'm actually going to start with my emergency room story because that's like a very relevant recent life event that happened to me. Then we'll get into my life update, what I'm doing for work work now, kind of how my life looks, and the discussion that I wanted to have kind of goes hand in hand with what I'm doing now, and you'll see why. So, I was in the emergency room on Labor Day, Monday of this week. Today is Friday. I still can't walk. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already kind of know this story, but it's honestly such an embarrassing story, but it's kind of funny, so I thought you guys might like to know. Yeah, so I spent my entire Labor Day in the emergency room getting stitches in my foot, and it was so gross. I was keeping you guys updated on my stories on Instagram and everyone's like, like, what happened? Like, how did you do that? Cause I had just told you guys that I hurt my foot in the shower and they're like, how the hell did you like break your toes in the shower? My shower is this like tiny little cube and it's very hard to shave your legs in there. So I prop my legs up on the wall to shave my legs. And apparently I like, swung my leg with a lot of force behind it this time. I don't even know. I kind of blacked out. I don't really remember the moment when it happened, but I like swung my leg up and I caught the handle to the shower door, which isn't even like that sharp or anything. So I must have just like caught it at exactly the right angle with the right force. And I like almost cut off my toe. Like I don't even like want to talk about it because it's so gross, but it was so bad. I didn't even like realize what happened at first. I was in so much shock. I just like looked down and there was like all of this blood and it had like knocked the wind out of me because it hurt so bad and I was just like what just happened? I thought I had just like stubbed my toe. So then I like crawled out of the shower and I saw it and I was like hyperventilating and almost passed out. So then I went to urgent care and had to wait there for two hours and they turned me away because they thought they could see like the tendon I have pictures of this too. I would show you because I think they're kind of fascinating, but they're also really gross, so I will spare you. So from urgent care, I had to go to the emergency room and actually they got me in really, really fast and they were super nice. The people at urgent care were not nice, so that was an improvement. Yeah, they had to put three stitches in my little toe, not my pinky toe, my fourth toe, and basically like stitch the toe back onto my body. <laughs> I have to have the stitches in for two weeks. I'm hobbling around and like hopping on one leg. I haven't been able to put shoes on since it happened. I haven't been able to leave my house since it happened. Just the dumbest friggin' injury I've ever had in my life. The worst part was getting numb when they were like sticking needles in between my toes to like numb it. I asked them to lay me down because I couldn't watch them do it because it was so gross. But yeah, 10 out of 10, do not recommend getting stitches between your toes because it's such a sensitive area. That was probably the most painful experience I've ever had. It was really interesting though. That was the first time I've ever gotten stitches. And so when they numb you, like your veins turn like white and you can see the white like trailing up your foot and like where it's numb. Very fascinating experience. I like to experience everything once. So now... I know how it feels. If I ever need to write about it, I could describe it well. So silver lining. So yeah, I've just kind of been down for the count this whole week. I haven't been able to do anything, which has been, I feel like the universe's way of telling me I needed to chill out because I like to constantly be going and constantly be productive. And this was like the universe's way of telling me if you're not gonna sit still, I'm gonna make you sit still. But I've actually been super productive this week. I'm bulk filming a lot because that's pretty much all I can do. I'm editing a lot. I'm doing a lot of writing and my new jobs, which I will get to. Now, I guess we'll move on to the life update. So I quit my job. If that wasn't obvious, you could probably assume as much. It was actually an internship. I was a copywriter intern 
and the internship technically was supposed to last for three months. So I started there at the beginning of May, and when the end of my three months rolled around, they asked me to stay. So obviously that was really flattering. I was really happy that they liked me, that I had done a good job. It had been a really good experience. It was something totally different than what I was used to because obviously I majored in creative writing. I've done like journalist work, I've done like interviews, I've done writing poetry and fiction obviously. I'd done editorial work before. I had other internships but I'd never done copywriting, especially not for the tech industry. So it was a really welcome challenge for me learning something completely new. I feel like I learned a lot about marketing and PR and sales and I'm really really grateful for that opportunity but when they asked me if I wanted to stay I politely told them no. As great of an experience as it was and as thankful as I am for that opportunity I just knew uh, that's not where I wanted to be. That's not what I wanted to be doing. I'm the kind of person that like once I make up my mind about something I'm done. I'm leaving. <laughs> like I stuck it out for like the whole commitment time that I had there but honestly it really got me thinking about what I wanted to do. I was just so unhappy at that job. It was sucking up so much of my time because I had to commute there, be there in the office and commute back and I felt like I was wasting so much of my time because honestly working in that office when I actually had things to work on it was great but I felt like the majority of my time was just sitting around waiting for other people to do their job and give me that so I could then work on it. So most of my time was just spent like waiting and I felt like I was so unproductive. I felt like I was wasting so much time and half the time I was sitting there I was just thinking I could be so much more productive on my own. I could be doing so much more right now. I could be getting so much more done and that was so frustrating for me. And then at the end of the day the things that I was producing I wasn't like really excited about. I didn't feel very fulfilled by it. I was working with the sales and marketing so I was like getting people to buy these really expensive products and there wasn't very much satisfaction in that. At the end of the day I like I don't know it wasn't worth it I guess is what I'm getting at. And so that's when I started to have this like big existential like, conversation with myself about like where am I going to go from here? What do I want to do? What is going to feel fulfilling for me? What is going to be satisfying for me? What's going to make me happy? What is something that I want to do? And it's hard because I did everything right like I got the good grades in high school, I went to a good school, I got a good scholarship, I got the good grades in college, I did all of the internships, I got a job right out of college, I did everything that I was supposed to do. I did everything that society has taught me is like the right path and I wasn't happy. And like are you really successful if you know you're achieving society's version of success but you're not happy? I don't think you are. And so then I had to start like thinking like what's my definition? of success. Like what does success look like for me? What would being fulfilled and happy look like for me? And it was kind of hard for me to come up with that because this is going to come off as like really conceited and I really hope it doesn't. <laughs> I don't mean it that way. But coming as someone who was like in the gifted and talented program since like kindergarten, I was in all honors classes, all AP classes, I've been told my whole freaking life how smart I am and how much potential I have and everyone always told me I should be a doctor or a lawyer or something and I felt like if I wasn't doing some like real impressive job, if I wasn't like the CEO of some company or something, I was like wasting my intelligence. I was wasting my potential. But just just because I can do something and be good at it doesn't mean I want to and it's taken me a while to realize that I would rather do something that I want to do even if it doesn't make me a lot of money but I felt like I like owed it to myself and I owed it to my family to like reach my full potential I guess and do these jobs that I didn't even want to be doing just because other people would look at me and think I was successful if that makes sense and I'm over it. <laughs> I'm freaking over that line of thinking and I don't want to do that and so what I'm doing right now I quit my job obviously. And so now I'm working kind of the equivalent of four jobs or at least I have like four different kinds of income and I'm so happy honestly right now. I have so much flexibility in my schedule. I'm essentially working for myself which is something I've always wanted to do. I never feel like I'm wasting my time. I never feel like I'm waiting for someone else. If I can't make progress in one of my jobs I pop over to something else. I'm constantly doing whatever I want to do and I'm constantly challenging myself and like using different parts of my brain because I have like four different jobs and it's not a long-term solution. I don't see myself doing this forever but for now I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing even though other people look at me and they're like wait you went to college and now you're doing that? So what I'm doing right now I feel like I keep like saying that and like not actually telling you my job. Job number one I am teaching English online to kids in China through the company Q Kids. I can link them down below if you're interested in working from home or you want to learn more about them. This is the polar opposite of what I was doing before. It's basically like 
a virtual classroom and you teach anywhere from one to four kids for half an hour sessions and you don't have to come up with the lesson plans or anything it's all in the software and it ranges from kids who are like four or five up until like 12 and 13 and it's so fulfilling frankly like seeing these kids and knowing that i'm teaching them a skill that could very well make a really big difference in their life i just feel like i'm doing something that matters i'm not just selling a product anymore i feel like i'm doing something that might actually make a difference in someone else's life and seeing the kids go from being like really frustrated when they don't understand to getting really excited when they do understand something just seeing that expression on their face is so worthwhile to me. The kids that I teach are in Beijing, so the hours that I work are really, really weird. I start my first shift at like 5.20 in the morning. If you've been watching my vlogs, I keep saying I get up before 5. That's why. I teach probably about three classes in the morning. I'm done by 7 a.m. And then Friday and Saturday nights, I teach. Like tonight is Friday. I have some classes to teach tonight because they're 14 hours ahead of me. So the hours just end up being kind of weird, but it actually hasn't been that hard to adjust my sleep schedule. So I do that um, every morning and then a couple of nights a week, you get to set your schedule every week. So I just kind of set it around my life. And then in the afternoons, I'm a nanny and I pick kids up from school around three and I drop them off at their various activities until their parents get home around 5.30. It's kind of funny going back and doing something that I did all through high school and like the summers between college, but it's really nice. I literally just pick the kids up from school, drop them off, and leave or hang out with them. And again, this is something that's just kind of fulfilling. I'm getting to the like super cheesy and nostalgic part of my life now that I've graduated college. I'm like looking back and realizing that my childhood is over and getting kind of sad about it. And so spending time with kids and like taking them to the park and playing tag and playing games with them kind of makes me feel like a kid again, which is kind of silly, but I don't know, it just makes me happy. And the nannying gig pays better than my office job did. So that's all I'm saying. So I do that in the afternoons, but between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. is when I do all of my creative work. So that's when I do work for YouTube. That's when I do my own writing. And then I'm also doing freelance writing. So my afternoons are full of writing and creating and stuff. And it's just such a nice break. It's so different than sitting in an office all afternoon and just dying to get home so I can work on the things I want to work on. I still have projects that have deadlines with my freelancing and stuff, but I also have time and the like emotional energy and capacity to work on my creative works because working in that office and like commuting and stuff, I was just so exhausted when I got home that I had no like bandwidth left. I had no energy left for my own projects. And now the jobs that I have, I spend all day with kids and it's not really emotionally taxing. So I feel like I still have that energy to put into my work, which is really nice. So yeah, the, between the teaching, the nannying, the YouTube, and all of my other like streams of income that come from YouTube and the freelancing and stuff. I'm making a lot more money than I was making in the office. I have way more flexibility with my schedule and I'm happy. So that's my life update. As you can probably tell from my background, I'm still living with my parents. I'm still at home. That is something that's on like the forefront of my mind about wanting to go and get my own place. I'm definitely making enough money where I could afford to do that now. I definitely wanted to wait until I was secure enough and had like a reliable steady income before I made that step obviously. So that is something that I'm looking into. Me and one of my friends have actually been talking about maybe getting an apartment together. So that is something that I'm hoping to do within the next year, but I'm not really in a rush to do it honestly. That's another like thing. I feel like the main thing pushing me to move out is this like stigma or like society pressure that like you're supposed to be out of your parents house by like a certain age or something. And honestly it is kind of embarrassing because I've been like dating and stuff so I have to like tell like guys like yeah I still live in my parents basement which is kind of embarrassing but some of my family members have been going through some health issues so it's been kind of nice to be here and help with that kind of stuff you guys know how much I love my dog so being around my that's gonna be the hardest part leaving is leaving my dogs that was the hardest part about being away at college was I miss my dog so much so for now I'm perfectly happy where I am but that is something that I'm hoping to change in the near future. So overall, yeah, I'm just kind of figuring things out as I go. And I'm someone who loves to have a plan. Obviously, I love my to-do lists. I love my calendars. I love knowing exactly when things are happening. But I'm trying to just kind of like chill, honestly, and be calm and 
I'm happy with where I am right now and enjoying where I am right now. This isn't like a long-term solution, obviously, but I'm also taking online classes. I forgot to tell you that. I'm currently getting my TESOL certificate, which is teaching English as a second language. It's actually really easy. I'm already halfway done with the course. I can link the one that I'm doing down below. And then I've also been looking into, after I finish this TESOL certificate, getting my editing certificate, which is a longer course and it's more expensive, which is why I haven't done it yet, to get my editing certificate to do freelance editing. Because right now I'm just doing freelance writing but if I could get that certification, further my education a little bit more, I would love to do some more freelance editorial work. But yeah, that's where my life is right now. And I actually asked you guys on Instagram and in one of my stories the other day if there was anything in particular that you wanted me to talk about or if you just wanted to DM me your experience with post-grad life. We could all share stories. A lot of you guys actually responded, so thank you for participating in that. It was really interesting actually reading all of your experiences. A lot of us have had a really similar experience. So I'm just gonna check and make sure that I answered everything that you guys asked. A lot of people asked how my job hunting experience was or how hard was it finding a job? Do you have any advice for recent college grads who are still looking for jobs? Honestly, I don't think people in older generations really understand how difficult it is getting a job out of college because that was something that was so disheartening for me. That was so discouraging for me when I first graduated. If you watched my college vlogs, I was applying for jobs in February. I graduated in May and I started my job search in February because I was so afraid of graduating without a job. I was honestly terrified and it was really hard and it's really really hard to bite my tongue when other family members throughout this entire process like well-meaning relatives like my grandpa and stuff asking like well are you like sending out resumes like talking to me like I wasn't even trying like you don't understand I applied for like over 80 jobs like I put so much time and energy and my emotional energy into these job applications and you never even hear back from most of them it's horrible it's a horrible experience if you're going through it right now I sympathize with you a hundred percent if anyone is still looking if you're struggling some advice that I would have is to broaden your search cast a wider net I guess because like I said I started working at a software company right out of school and that's not where I wanted to end up obviously but that's still some experience on my resume I still definitely got some worthwhile things out of that experience even if I didn't stay at that job I still learned a lot especially if you've never even done like an internship and you don't even have any office experience like getting any job is better than nothing you'll get something out of that experience so I would just recommend casting a wider net and looking for things that you might not think you're qualified for, you might not think you would like, but have an open mind about and give it a chance. And then obviously there's like a million online resources and places that you can look for jobs. You can go LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, like there's all kinds of stuff. And if you're still in college, I would highly encourage you to go to career services and utilize the services that your college has. So many people I know like didn't even know we had these resources at school, but they are so helpful. If you have an internship coordinator, if you're still in school, go talk to them, have them help you find internships that was so helpful for me I found the best internship I've ever had through that lady I never would have found it either she was like I hold on to this internship and I only give it to one person a semester and I don't tell anyone else about it and I was like please let me have it <laughs> go get help with your resume if you need help with your resume that's what they're there for my college has like a whole database of alumni that we can go into if we're looking for a job to get connected to alumni. They have it like organized by the states and also by your field and stuff. So utilize your college's resources if you have them. And also one other thing I want to say is if you feel like everyone else has it figured out and you don't and you feel like you're behind because all of your other friends have like post-grad plans, they don't. Everyone thinks that everyone else has it more figured out and more together than they do. That was like what I was afraid of. I was getting ready to graduate and I felt like everyone else had plans because a lot of my friends were going to um, grad school and so obviously they had to do like their applications and stuff ahead of time. And so I felt like everyone had plans and I didn't have a plan and I needed a plan. And then I graduated and I went straight into work literally the day after I graduated. And then I watched all of my friends have like the whole summer off and they were all on vacations. So they didn't have a job yet. I had thought everyone already had plans and really they hadn't. So if you're feeling like behind and like everyone else has their life figured out, I guarantee they don't. They just seem like they do. And then someone asked, how do you deal with the unknown and lack of structure? Just graduated high school and struggling. This is so lame of me. I was like re-watching my own College Week in My Life vlogs this morning and getting real sappy because I missed it. Not even like college in general. I don't know. I missed having that kind of structure to my day. My vlogs were always so busy. I was always going somewhere. I always had something to do. And my life's not like that now. My pace of life has slowed down obviously and I'm not as stressed which is really nice but sometimes I kind of miss that stress in a weird way and so my advice with like the lack of structure is to try and 
make some structure in your life come up with some routines like my routine right now is I wake up at like 4 45 I get a cup of tea I get ready to do my teaching for the morning and then right when I'm done at 7 I go for a walk I catch the sunrise I come home sometimes I go straight to the gym I make plans to get lunch with my friends I go to a coffee shop to do my work some days my like freelance work and stuff I change my location so I try and like make more structure for myself I make plans for myself to keep myself moving throughout the day and honestly that's really helped just like staying at home all day was like not good for my mental health I needed to be busy I needed a million things to do so just because you don't have like the easy structure of being in school anymore doesn't mean you can't make your own structure and make your own routines and I have found that super helpful but anyway yeah this video is actually a lot longer than I was expecting it to be thank you guys so much for watching I hope this was I don't know interesting for you possibly helpful I would love to hear your thoughts about anything that I said today if you have advice for recent college grads or people who are still in college or if you have an opinion on the whole like life track that we're all expected to make and like how we view success and stuff I would love to hear your opinion on that conversation that was kind of my goal with this video was I kind of wanted to open up a discussion about it but yeah that's what my life looks like right now I don't know if that's what you expected but I hope you guys are all doing well if you're struggling right now to find a job or if you're worried about something right now feel free to like dm me if you want to talk about it I'm always here for you guys it's a rough process and sometimes people who haven't gone through it recently don't really understand and other than that i think i'll just see you guys in my next video if you like this video i'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up maybe subscribe to my channel if you're new i'll just see you guys in my next video I'm very very soon bye so hit me so hit me Hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With